Hello friends, this is Erwin Cito here uh, from Stock Hacker Academy. I'm here with Joel Arndt, who's our in-house crypto expert. And, uh, and Joel and I are doing this together because he knows us better than I do. <laughs> hence everything I've done, I've always leaned on experts and especially people that know stuff better than I do. Uh, hence we're uh, talking to Joel today on a topic that is of interest to myself, interest to many people uh, with inflation out of control and fixed income, traditional fixed income investments are, uh, how do you say, less than ideal? <laughs> disappointing. <laughs> yeah, disappointing. I, I, I was actually preparing some slides on, uh, about fixed income investments. I believe the two-year Canadian bond offers 2.2% <laughs> and the 10-year offers 2.6%. Who in their right mind would lock up their money for an extra eight years for, <laughs> for 2.6%? Uh, yeah, hence uh, a lot of the leading edge investors that we know, especially people that are more, that, that like cryptocurrency as an investment, they are, uh, we have friends, both uh, Joel and I have personal friends who are doing what's called staking. Uh, and that's why, uh, that's what we're, the topic is for today. And that's what Joel and I are going to talk about. So Joel, like I want to stake, or, and we're talking about, it's not the easiest thing to explain. This has nothing to do with stakes. <laughs> this, is, this is like a fixed income investment, uh, but it's uh, not the easiest to explain. I think we can agree on that. <laughs> no, it's definitely not, not completely intuitive. Not for everyday people anyway. It took me a while to wrap my head around it, and I still don't have a full grasp on it. The, the easiest analogies I think are great analogies, but they don't get enough detail into what this is, what staking really is. For yeah. example, the, the, the one common uh, analogy I've, I've seen is, well, first off, uh, people in our community, they want some cash flow. They want some protection from inflation. They want some, uh, they're willing to do fixed income uh, investments for fixed returns uh, for, again, for cash flow purposes. They're not looking for like market, market gains necessarily. Uh, and to do so, uh, stakings come up and the analogy, the really simple analogy that I've seen for staking would be like a savings account at a traditional bank. Uh, like, so if you and I were to uh, leave $10,000 Canadian, US, whatever currency in the savings account, the bank will give us interest. I saw an ad today from my local bank. They are offering me 0.25 on, on cash balances in my savings account which is quite wonderful if i'm willing to leave it for a certain amount of time until june i believe it was they'll offer me a whole 1.25 percent <laughs> which is uh which is lovely uh for some uh i think most in our community are looking for a bit more um but again the, going back to the analogy the analogy was that if uh in that business model if i leave the money in the account in the bank my bank account my bank can now go use that money to invest with typically they're going to lend with it and then the same analogies for staking. If we put up our cryptocurrency, uh, then uh, then other crypto investors out there can leverage it to do whatever they want with, and they'll pay us a return. But there's so many things that aren't included that, that, that are not complete in that analogy. For example, yeah, and... our savings are insured yeah. by the government. <laughs> staking is nothing like that at all. <laughs> and staking, when you when you have your money. Um quote unquote staked in whatever platform it is. We'll use Ethereum, the Ethereum network, just because it's the, the biggest uh, network where you can stake any kind of crypto. Um, they, and it's the most widely known, so their coin is Ether. So if you hear, us, hear me refer to Ether, that's the currency on the Ethereum network, just to get a little technical. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So oh, sorry, Joel, before we even go getting technical, uh, some simple examples from our community, like good friends of ours. We have one gentleman who is staking uh, USD stablecoin. Hmm. Uh, so that's not advice, folks. Folks, that's just a, that's terminology. Stablecoin. <laughs> it's, not, it's not my opinion of it or not. Uh, they're staking uh, US dollar stablecoin and receiving twelve percent uh, USD stablecoins in return. And uh, and I have another friend of mine who is. Uh, in my community is well is known as the, the most well known, uh, sorry, the most uh, serious crypto investor within one of my communities. And he is staking uh, all sort several types of cryptocurrency, 
uh, for, from Bitcoin to Ethereum to Solana to whatever else, what have you, uh, the more common, more common known ones, and he's re- earning a return on those as well. So then, you know, naturally myself, like yourself, we're like, interesting. Like at a minimum, these returns will likely beat inflation. So that's actually a really good segue into why we're talking about this. Yeah, the, if, the reason why I got into it was the passive income angle. It's, it seems like accessible passive income. There are a few hurdles, a few barriers, um, fees. Now, fees are better these days, the last few weeks, than they have been in a long time. Watch them. I, I literally have a little icon on my browser and um, the fees are lower than uh, lower than they have been in a while. So it's easier to get in today than it was even six months ago. But so if you're looking for passive income, staking is definitely an opportunity. The caveat is you, you it's not as liquid as say a high interest savings account. So it can be a little bit of a pain in the butt to get the money out. The beautiful thing about the crypto community is they've, there are workarounds, but if you want simple, just purely stake your cryptocurrency and generate a return, um, then you have to be willing to part with that money for a long time, for a while, years, um, at least. That's right. just, just to add to right that now. though, Joel, uh, a lot of people in our community are already private lending. Uh, they're lending funds uh, for real estate purposes. They're lending to often other investors or other homeowners. Yeah. And those terms are typically three, six, and then most commonly I see is a year. Mm-hmm. So there, there already seems to be many people in search of uh, fixed income investments outside of traditional GICs, government bonds, yeah. stuff like that. So again, so again, for, for me, at least I consider this more of an alternative to like private lending. Mm. And that's, um, to go back to the analogy of like a high interest savings account where banks want you to put your money in so that they can turn around and, and invest it. Cause they have regulations saying they can lend 30, 50, hundred times based on cash values. It's different with crypto. Um, your money is actually your crypto is actually involved in, you know, the monetary system. It's, it's tough to find uh, layman terms for this, but because you have this money staked, this money locked in, you're actually involved without having any active participation in the decision-making process of uh, on a day-to-day basis in these, in these blockchains, in these networks. And for that involvement, you're getting this return. Uh, there are rewards uh, in, based in this involvement, so uh, and you get a share in those in those rewards. That's where the returns come from. We don't know how long these returns are going to be like this. Um, it's volatile, so it can those rewards can mean a lot. It can mean a little. Um, what's interesting is okay. So I'll take two examples: ETH, Ether. Um, if you're getting 12% Ether every year, that, that sounds really good. But if Ether is $3,000 uh, one year and then $1,000 the next year, you know that's inconsistent. That's tough. It's, a, it's still a long-term bet. You're still betting that Ether is going to be better 25 years from now than it is today. That's anybody who's staking, that's the conviction they have behind their, their staking. Um, USD, the USDC, so uh, is, a, is a different example though. Stable coin is a term used for um, currencies, cryptocurrencies that are pegged to the US dollar. So USDC, which I believe is run by Coinbase, uh, which is a, a crypto trading platform, they have committed to maintaining a treasury and a monetary policy to make sure that USDC stays at a value of one US dollar. How that all happens, that's beyond me. That's monetary policy, that's central bank stuff. But instead of a council or a board of directors making decisions on this monetary policy, it's an algorithm. So people are removed from the decision-making process almost entirely, not completely, because we do need to make changes to that algorithm from time to time. 
but it's an algorithm that's making all the decisions um, of value and, and making all the decisions on buying and purchasing to keep that treasury, to keep that float in place to make sure that one, D, one USDC equals $1. So for our friend that's staking USDC and getting 12% a month, as long as USDC keeps its peg to the US dollar, he's actually getting a true 12% US every year, which is very smart. Right, so just to clarify, is that 12% per year? And so like roughly 1% per month? Roughly. So I'm actually gonna do a quick screen, uh, do a share here. And we're gonna use an example of crypto.com. So again, a good friend of mine uses crypto.com. Uh, again, this is folks, this isn't an endorsement. And this is hardly financial advice. This is crypto.com, uh, crypto, uh, shout out crypto.com, <laughs> free endorsement. <laughs> crypto.com <laughs> slash earn. And here we have US coin. And then you can decide, this is just for, uh, this is just a calculator. So say I wanna do a thousand, do a thousand dollars worth of USD coin, you know, select whatever one month, it tells me I can make roughly 10% per year. Paid, I get paid out $1.92 per week. And then if you wanna do a bit more, then the rates go up. Say, for example, they have some set uh, options here to toggle between. So it's $40,000 or more. Right. Can't, I don't want to completely understand how this is supposed to work. But for example, if I put up 50 grand, I personally wouldn't be doing that. <laughs> <laughs> Earn 6,000. And then there's lots of tokens to choose from. Joel mentioned Ether earlier. And uh, my personal favorite is Bitcoin because it's easier. For, it's much easier for me to understand with my small brain. So if I put, if I put up 10,000 uh, Bitcoin, for example, I would earn 6,500 US, which works out to about 6.5% per year, paid out as 12.5% USD. Yep. Better than and the savings I was being offered from my bank. <laughs> way better. You know? And, and if, you are, if your conviction is that Bitcoin is cheap right now and will be worth a lot more in 20 or 30 years, then um, you probably don't have any intention of spending any Bitcoin. You're just accruing right now or hodling as the lingo goes. So you might as well do something with it while it's being held in a wallet of some sort. Now, there's a whole bunch of caveats around that. Like if you're staking with crypto.com, it's probably in its, um, in the crypto.com exchange, there's a term, and I, I, there's a term in, in the crypto world, not your keys, not your crypto. If crypto.com is hacked and they get a hold of, they get a hold of, you know, all of that, um, however much, if your crypto is at stake. Whereas if it's in your wallet, it's a lot safer generally. So, um, and that's the traditionalist, that's the maximalist uh, yeah. pr best practice. Yep. And remember your password. <laughs> <laughs> remember, yeah, remember your keys. Some people will go as far as to engrave their keys on um, objects and leave them in like safes or specific hiding places around the house. I mean, that's like the extreme, but. Mm -hmm. So Joel, this is pretty bleeding edge stuff. Uh, for example, when I was researching this topic, most uh, articles I read were that your returns would be paid to you in your in the currency, whatever you're staking. So if you're staking ETH, you get ETH back. But actually, let me just share again. Like in this example, in the example that I was just sharing with crypto, they're actually being they're paying you dollars. So this sounds like a service. This sounds like they are uh, actually providing a service for you. You're. Crypto and your ETH is probably, it is probably genuinely staked, although with Bitcoin, that's a little different just because Bitcoin doesn't have a system that requires staking. It's the foundation of staking is a proof of stake uh, system at the, at, the, at the blockchain level. Bitcoin isn't proof of stake. It's something that's called proof of work. So I have an idea how they're making that money is, is a little different for Bitcoin than it is for Ethereum, but that's, that's another conversation. Um, if you were to stake, okay, so let's take Ethereum, for example. If you were to stake strictly with the Ethereum network, so you have, so you're adding your Ether to a pool, 
uh, who of people who are already staking, then you're probably not being paid out weekly. So I have a little bit of Ether stake. I'm doing it with a uh, platform called Lido, L-I-D-O, not an endorsement. It's just the easiest one I found. Um, also, they have a, a way to give you liquidity back once you stake something, but that's a different um, uh, different conversation. I'm not getting paid out weekly. I'm just accruing ETH in my wallet. So um, every, and it's not, it, I actually, I've been trying to get it out because I'm not making, uh, I'm not even making 7.5%. Uh, I think I'm making 4.5, 4 to 5%, which isn't bad. Like it's better than a savings account, but it's like, I know there's better. <laughs> so, right. so it sounds like people I, have to do some research as to what the best rates are. It's not are straightforward. Yeah. yeah. And again, this sounds really, really new because when I when I was researching, almost all the articles were written in fall last year. <laughs> because it all of a sudden became popular too, like DeFi. So, okay, I'll stop. Um, this is some, a part of something called decentralized finance. This whole okay. system, this idea of making passive income with, um, uh, with cryptocurrency is one element of a concept called decentralized finance. Basically, just you're in control of your money. Uh, no central banks and no governments. And no governments, and anybody can participate. It's accessible; should be accessible. Not always in in, in practice, but in theory, it should be. Um, that became what, what they called actually two years two years ago. Technically, they had what they called the De, uh, DeFi summer. It was just this where decentralized finance just kind of took off, and all these platforms kind of came out of nowhere. And you had to be really careful because there are some people where you de deposit something into, into a platform that's just starting off and people would just make off with money it's called a rug pull. And like, and so this it really requires a lot of research up front. It's not, it's not easy, but something like crypto.com, they're a big exchange. They've been around for a while, even if their service isn't, even if what they're paying out and how they're, operating the service isn't strictly staking, it still has that, they still have more credit or clout um, than a lot of the newer stuff. So that's kind of one of the ways to stay safe is just see who's been around the longest, um, who's weathered hats, you know, have they survived hats? Um, and then how much money in total is staked? So what's the net asset value of everything that they have staked? The, the more money, the more they have to protect what they have. So they're investing in cybersecurity a lot more too. So it's, although it can be really tricky to find uh, good platforms, um, starting with the old and bigger names, people with the most trust already invested, it's one place to start investigating anyway. Fabulous. Anything else we need to, I know, folks, this is just a brief introduction to staking. We obviously cannot offer you all the answers in within 10 minutes. Anything else we should cover, Joel? I think the, I think the biggest thing to understand is that there's no guarantees. Not like, and you, you talked about that in the beginning. This isn't insured. It's, it, I'll, repeat, I'll say it again. It has to come from a conviction that the cryptocurrency you are investing in or buying or staking is going to stick around and it is going to be worth more long term. If you don't have that conviction, stay stay on the sidelines, do, do yourself a favor. Um, but if you think that if you're willing to take a risk, if, if there's a portion of money you're willing to risk, I, I think it's fun. I think it's complete fun um, researching this stuff. And you don't have to get into the nitty gritty. You don't have to understand what proof of stake is exactly how it works. It's probably good that you understand what the network is and how it operates, um, because otherwise you're bl investing blindly. But it just be ready to to lose out, to lose what you invest. Like anything with investing, if you're ready to lose what you invest, at least there's no surprises. And Joel, I believe you shared it earlier. Uh, if you're planning on holding this long term, anyways, it's not so much a bad idea to be earning some extra side passive money on the side for doing that. Yep. Yeah. And we, um, 
published an article uh, exactly along with this topic, staking, staking your crypto. Uh, we also get into some of the um, obstacles, some like pros and cons of it. And we, we lay it out in a side-by-side in a, in a -side fashion too. So it's just a start, it's just something that's meant to get you started. And um, this alongside of other side hustles, just stacking the strategies, right? It's whether it's real estate, stocks, stock options, staking is just another thing that you can put into your financial freedom toolbox, so to speak, and uh, and fly from there. And and uh, I'm I'm pro gold as well. <laughs> so there is no one answer for how to protect yourself for what's going on in the world. Uh, but you know, it, I think of at least doing little things in every area for insurance, uh, because I like to sleep at night. <laughs> yeah. And if, if, if you're just new to like the concept of crypto and somehow you stumbled on this video, I think a really good start is the Bitcoin standard and, uh, the price of tomorrow, two books that are fantastic reads that it, Bitcoin standard particularly introduced me to this whole world and got me started. So. And I'll add to that Ray Dalio's newest book, uh, Principles of a Change of the Changing World Order. It's it's scary I, stuff out there. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Yeah, and if you if you understood if you saw the world the way that Joel and I see it, you'd understand why we're trying to learn this stuff and investing or invest our hard earned money into this stuff. And when like when governments are making decisions about. Um, I mean, a pandemic is the easiest and most recent example. They just made a decision to start putting, to, to just spend, right? Spend money that they don't have, so they just print more. And they had to, on a certain level and with certain logic, they had to in order to keep the economy afloat. But it also, we can see the impact of it now. We see the inflation every time we go to the grocery store. Uh, I would say gas station, but there are other factors in that. Um, but we're trying to do renos. So, When you don't have a government that, when you don't have someone managing your money like that, they can't just decide to spend and make more and just like inflate the value of their treasury um, or the value of, I don't even know exactly how that all works, but they can't just make a decision uh, to affect how much your dollar is worth like that. There's theoretically, there's stability in that. And that's the most, to me, that's the most attractive piece to all of this. There's a bunch of really cool elements, but crypto is attractive because it's not one body of people making decisions about my money. Amazing. All right, uh, well, I think we'll wrap it up there. And if anyone has any show suggestions they want us to cover, if you can comment in them below, we, we're, we're open, completely open to ideas. We love to learn and share just as much as anybody out there. And uh, thanks for watching. Anything else, Joel? Thank you. This has been fun.